Hello, Fools. Today, I'm pleased to be interviewing Jay Sugarman, CEO of SafeHold, which is ticker SAFE, S-A-F-E. SafeHold is a ground lease REIT with $3.6 billion in ground leases around the United States. We're going to talk a bit about why that's such an investable idea. A little bit about Jay. He served as the chairman and chief executive of iStar, which is SafeHold's manager since 2016. He served as the director of iStar since 1996 and its chief executive officer since 1997. And prior to forming iStar and its predecessors, he managed private investment funds on behalf of the Burden family and the Ziff family. Well, thank you for joining us, Jay. Great. Good afternoon. Well, let's get right into it. How is SafeHold's business model different than other REITs? Well, most REITs focus on owning or financing buildings, whereas SafeHold focuses on owning the land under the buildings. Uh, We created what we call the modern ground lease to unlock value for those building owners. And we've really created the lowest cost, longest term, most efficient capital source for them. So land, uh, we think, is just a safer asset, hence our name SafeHold, with very predictable returns and lots of upside. Fantastic. I think one thing that people want to understand is that relationship between iStar and SafeHold. How, how exactly is that set up? Yeah, if you think about it, uh, when we started this uh, five years ago, and we thought this was going to turn into a really big idea, a big company. We decided to make it a pure play. So we spun it out of iStar uh, with a pool of assets, but also maintained a relationship via this investment management agreement so that SafeHold could get the benefit of all of iStar's 30 years of experience in the finance world, the net lease world, its relationships, its network, but let SafeHold be its own thing and make it easy for investors by having a true pure play ground lease, modern ground lease company, um, but have all the benefits of iStar's scale and scope to help scale it. What's interesting, I think, to us is uh, that's worked really well. Um, We think we've scaled the business much faster than we could have on our own. But iStar has never been a seller. It's always been a buyer of this idea. So it has continued to add to its ownership position. Today, it owns well north of $2 billion of safe hold stock. Um, So it's not just its manager. uh, It's actually, you know, its biggest believer. Excellent. Well, let's talk about growth and acquisition. It seems like when I look at your balance sheet, you've got plenty of dry powder to spend if you choose. So how do you think SafeHold is going to start deploying that? Well, our teams are very busy. We've got over a billion dollars of capital available to us right now. It seems like we're getting calls from new customers, new markets every day. Um, So we feel like really there was a lag in 2020, uh, given COVID really shutting down business activity. It feels like in 2021, that's starting to unwind. And we look forward to a big second half of the year for for SafeHold and our origination team. Fantastic. On your earnings call, I know you talked about Ground Lease Plus. And can you explain to us how that program works? So Safe underwrites land when buildings are on top of that land Mm -hmm. or when a building is in the process of being built. But customers are coming to us even earlier than that and asking to do a modern ground lease. So our solution for them is Ground Lease Plus, where iStar does a ground lease now before the building is set to go up, typically at a a smaller size. And then SAFE agrees to expand that ground lease once the building is actually going up. Um, So we think it actually gives our customers uh, another tool to lower their cost of capital, gives a pipeline to safe hold of some of the highest quality assets Uh, that maybe we get a shot at down the road, maybe we don't. Now we actually lock it in. And it gives iStar a very attractive return, um, both between its direct interest in this pre-development ground lease, but also as an owner of SafeHold. So we think this is kind of one plus one plus one equals five. Um, We think it's a good solution for customers, a good opportunity to invest for iStar, and ultimately building a great pipeline of future uh, transactions for SafeHold. Interesting. So you mentioned the term modern ground lease. What exactly does that mean to SafeHold? Yeah, so we look back in history and said, um, boy, ground leases have been around for a long time, but they're they're not very prevalent. They're not used very often. And when we thought about our experience in the corporate real estate world, where we've been doing sale leasebacks and net leases for corporations for 20, 25 years now, We realized the same capital efficiency that drove 
corporations to want to separate their operating business from their real estate by means of a net lease Mm -hmm. would be the same dynamic that a building owner should want to separate the building, the operating business of the property from the passive land. And the more we looked at it, the more we realized this is a, a, a much better solution for commercial real estate owners of high quality assets. Again, we think this provides lower cost capital, longer term capital, more efficient capital. And we couldn't see why ground leases hadn't really become that for building owners until we realized most landlords of ground leases are typically an institution. It's a university, it's a hospital, Mm -hmm. it's a municipality who are not really thinking about the building owner as a customer. They're not really worried about helping the building owner make more money. And we realized if we could do that, if we could take everything we'd learned in the finance world and in the net lease world and translate it into the commercial real estate world, we could deliver this much better solution uh, in a really unique way. And by creating a better modern ground lease, they got rid of all the bad provisions that lenders didn't like and buyers didn't like and owners didn't like. Create a modern ground lease that fits with the modern real estate finance, modern real estate investment world, that you could create a very, very large industry and that Safehold could be the dominant player in that industry. Interesting. Want to get your take on central business districts. Right now, it's something I'm really thinking a lot about. Uh, I cover real estate. So it looked like people were going to start going back to work in October, September. We're starting to see now with the Delta variant, there are definitely some concerns about that. How are you feeling about central business districts in general? Good question. I mean, we think concentrations of talent, culture, economic activity, infrastructure, are good places to own land. And we think the histories of big cities like London and New York, they really do demonstrate the resilience of these unique places where all those things come together at scale. Um, So we focus on the top 30 markets in the US. We think that's where you get this aggregation of economic activity and talent and culture and markets adapt. Central cities have to adapt. Good leadership helps them adapt more quickly But over long periods of time, either by virtue of demographics or uh, economic centers of activity, the DCs, the New Yorks, the LAs, the San Francisco's, you know, they will continue to reinvent themselves. And now we've got, you know, the whole, the Portland's, the Nashville's, the Orlando's, the Atlanta's. And so we're not trying to pick any single market. We're not trying to pick any single asset type. We're building a franchise and an enterprise that covers them all. And that's one of the big exciting things is we're not just changing a single part of commercial real estate. We're trying to literally change the entire industry by giving it this new capital source created to serve the customer, to serve building owners, to give them something they definitely want, but have never had available to them. Well, let's chat a little bit about portfolio allocation, because right now, Safehold has around 41% of ground leases in the Northeast. I know you've got some deals cooking in Austin, uh, Jacksonville. Surely you're watching Sunbelt migration like we all are. What are you thinking the next few years are going to look like in terms of how that geographic allocation might shift? Yeah, you know, some of the biggest assets in our country are in the gateway cities, the LAs and the New York. So when we started the business, we had we had a real focus on breaking those markets. But over time, we've almost gotten into all of our top 30 markets. So I mentioned the, the Seattle's and the Portland's and the San Diego's and the Phoenixes and the Dallas's and Houston's and San Antonio's and the Orlando's and Miami's. So Uh, We're pretty well covering the map right now. A couple more cities we'd like to break into. We are starting to see ways to expand the market, you know, not just horizontally across more cities, but we're penetrating each individual city better, multifamily, office, hospitality. You know, we're seeing people come to us now with opportunities that candidly two years ago we would have never seen. Um, So I feel like you'll see those concentrations reflect the economic activity around the country. And so it won't be surprising that you know some of these gateway cities will represent a larger portion of our portfolio. But it's going to be pretty well diversified across all the economic centers, all the best urban locations. 
uh, in the United States. And you know, long term, we think that's a great place to be. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the allocation too, because right now you're mostly weighted towards office, but also with some multifamily hotels. Offices, I keep saying office is the wild card because that's really what it seems like lately. Uh, we're seeing companies change their plans. Uh, what are you feeling about that allocation? Are you going to be looking at ground leases at with other types of buildings? You know, it's funny. We, we look at our business through a hundred year lens. So nice. some of the things that are very much in the news and very much a focus, you know, in the next quarter or qu- several quarters, we're looking for longer term trends. And again, we think you know, transition and certainly, you know, accommodating some of the new new ideas around how people want to work is part of that. But having physical spaces in major urban markets that are the centers of culture and economic activity, we don't think that changes. So the buildings will adapt. The owners of those buildings will need to adapt. But we think the centers, the locus of activity, of knowledge, of innovation, of culture and fun and excitement are not going to leave these main and main locations anytime. Uh, and so I think our view, you know, candidly is there are going to be changes in the way people work and the way offices uh, uh, are used, whether it's three days a week or four days a week or 10 o'clock instead of nine o'clock. That's all going to have to adapt to extract the highest potential from employees. But you know, we don't see a world where the city's empty and, you know, there's a, a surfeit of space that uh, really has no economic reason to be. I actually think it's the opposite. And again, we look back in history to the Bostons and the New Yorks in our, our country. Uh, and then we look at the Londons and the, you know, Parises in Europe and we go, the great cities are still the great cities. And in the U.S., we have the benefit of some really fast growing new cities as well. Um, so we're spreading our, you know, gospel around all those markets, but you won't see us, you know, leaving uh, the New Yorks or leaving the LAs anytime soon. So you're making that 99 year, 100 year decision. You know, that that's obviously a lot of pressure because you're you're making a decision for whole other generations. How does Safehold make those decisions, and how large does a ground lease have to be to be worth it for the company? Yeah, I mean, we we think in those top 30 markets, there's about $7 trillion of commercial real estate. So we think this is an enormous market opportunity. You know, we're looking at uh, some long-term historical trends, again, centered around centers of knowledge, places of great economic activity, places where culture has you know, establish itself. You know, there's physical components to that. There's environmental components to that. But again, we think if we place the top 30 cities as our target market, we're in good shape. We don't can't tell you whether who's going to be the biggest winner, uh, but there aren't going to be many losers on that list. Cities that have succeeded typically have that combination of attributes that's very hard to recreate. And so some people call them NFL cities. Uh, we tend to look beneath the surface and really try to understand what's driving the reason that city was created, the economic activity, the transportation nexus, uh, how culturally it's developed in identity. And we feel really good about the cities we're working in. We learn more and more about you know what's happened over long periods of history, and we see it playing out today in the same way that I'm sure 50 years ago, people were scratching their head. Uh, but these cities have a way of reinventing themselves. and. If you own the best land with the best uh, building owners uh, working very hard to adapt, boy, we've seen enormous fortunes been created, and we think we've created the best mousetrap out there. I don't know. I'm, 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 you can tell I'm really optimistic. We're at four billion dollars approximately of deals in a seven trillion dollar market. So I think there's a lot more we will learn. But over the last five years, we've built tremendous intellectual property and research. Uh, that's going to guide us going forward. So think about those long-term changes and things like that. What happens when a building goes through a conversion? Like if we start seeing more office converting into multifamily, does that impact Safehold in any way? Yeah. You know, one of the things I love about our, our industry is, you know, you start with location, 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 which is very much in our minds as, as landowners over long periods of time. But people sometimes forget the other sort of mantra in real estate is highest and best use. Mm-hmm. And all those real estate entrepreneurs 
you know, walk by every building and imagine what it could be, not what it is. And they're trying to figure out how can I put the highest and best use on that piece of land? So we love the story and I, I can do it looking out my window of even over the last 30 years, the two story shoe store that became a 10 story apartment building that's now a hundred story you know, uh, office and mixed use building. That dynamic, that highest and best use is really capturing and harnessing the creative energy of our entire industry. So we don't have to figure out what that corner is going to be. We know there's a thousand people walking by it every day who go, I have a better idea for what should be done there. And that's what uh, a modern ground lease both unlocks for our customers, but also for our shareholders. They get the benefit of all that brilliance, creativity, perseverance, and energy, because whatever they build on the land at the end of the ground lease, we will own, Safehold will own. And that turns out to be an enormous store of value that grows dramatically from year to year. And then I don't think anybody's ever been able to capture the way Safehold is capturing. So for us, this is the one of the few businesses where the customer wins and we win. And when you can do that, when one plus one equals more than two, and you're not greedy, you share the benefits with your customer and with your shareholders, uh, you can build a very big business. I mean, I look at the data center business, which didn't exist 20 years ago. You know, the largest company is $75 billion. The cell tower business, which didn't really exist 25 years ago, largest company is $125 billion. Today, our market cap's $5 billion. So we think if we keep doing what we're doing, serve our customers really well, our shareholders have enormous opportunity and upside ahead of them. Are you concerned about anybody uh, competing with you? Obviously, you're, you're the first ones doing it. You've got, you've got a lot of market share. Is there anybody else out there that's maybe not on the market yet that, that might try to come in? Uh, people will definitely, the more we teach people about this business, I mean, we invented it. Uh, we created the, the nomenclature and the rationale. We see people starting to try to you know, pull things off our website and copy them. But as I said, we have enormous intellectual property we've built up over the last five years. You know, it's a $7 trillion opportunity. Probably, you know, this should be like the net lease market is for corporations, a trillion dollar industry. There's room for plenty of folks to come in. Our mission is to be the lowest cost, best provider of this capital, and others will find their own niches, but we want to be the dominant player, and we really don't see any competitive threat yet uh, that should upset that uh, vision, but we're not going to be alone. This is a great business. Our stock is you know, one of the best performing stocks in the entire REIT universe, so uh, it's going to be hard to keep that under wraps. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you're acquiring existing ground leases, obviously, but you're also trying to teach the market about this untapped opportunity, which you know most of the market isn't aware of. What's that education process look like? About 10 to 20% of our business is buying existing ground leases. And in many cases, going to those customers and saying, hey, we just bought the ground. This is a very bad ground lease. Let us fix it for you. And then we call that program Safe Swap. But 80 to 90% of our business is creating new ground leases. So it's going to a customer who owns a building and the land underneath it and saying, we can provide better capital to you, lower cost, longer term, more efficient. So really the, the thrust of our business was to create ground leases that building owners would want, not ground leases that building owners had to deal with. And that was sort of the magic of the first couple of years is educating our customers that this is the you know, best capital you can access. We will, that land underneath your building is worth way more to us than it is to you. So if you work with us, your returns will go up, your risk will go down. Uh, and, you know, one of the offshoots of, you know, the modern ground lease is we save them a lot of transaction costs every time they finance or uh, sell their building. So there's lots of benefits that we had to start with the customer and say, look, let me show you why a modern ground lease is way better than the old fashioned ground leases. You are our customer. We're going to be in business forever together. We want you to win. And then the education, once we did that reasonably well, we had to start educating the marketplace. And the, the, the analyst community and our shareholders were very intrigued with what we were building. 
but they'd never seen one before. We're the only public company doing it. We're the only nationally scaled institutional quality platform. And so at each component, we've had to kind of walk people through, get them comfortable. We now have the rating agencies quite comfortable. We've gotten triple B plus BAA1 ratings, which speaks to the safety and, and, and strength of our company. Uh, we've gotten customers in all these top 30 markets. Multifamily is one of our fastest growing product lines, GL plus coming out. So we continue to show people how this business is going to continue to keep growing. And as we do that, and as people appreciate the value we're creating, and as our share price goes up, our cost of capital goes down. As our cost of capital goes down, both from these investment grade ratings from Moody's and Fitch, with our share price going up and our cost of equity going down, guess what that does for our customers? We can give them lower cost of capital. And if we give them lower cost of capital, more of them want to do business with us. So it is this very virtuous circle where the more we educate both our customers and our uh, investment community, um, that kind of works together. The more customers we get, the lower our cost of capital. The higher our share price gets, the lower our cost of capital. Back to our customers with an even better product. So we see this as, as the beginning of something really special. Um, we still feel like we're very early in the game. We've broken through on some of the key considerations that people said, look, I really like what you're doing. Seems fascinating, but I want to see you, you know, grow your customer base. Check. I want to see you get investment grade ratings. Check. I want to see you, you know, build your management team. Check. So we've done all those things. Uh, the stock has responded nicely, but we still think we're in the early innings. Created a nice virtuous circle there. Uh, what about the pandemic and the impact on uh, CMBS loans? I know originally when the pandemic hit, there were all of these groups looking to you know, buy distressed assets. That kind of hasn't played out, but are you seeing some, some businesses needing that kind of capital and does that play any role for SafeHold? Well, again, when you when you create something that represents the lowest cost, longest term, most efficient capital, it can apply across a wide range of needs. Like you mentioned, we haven't really seen a heavy dose of distress yet, but we have seen some customers come to us and say, look, I need to do a, you know, a meaningful adaptation of my building. I need to access really long term, low cost capital. I, I don't want a lender hovering over me trying to tell me how to do it, what to do it. And so we've seen uh, folks use ground leases as sort of repositioning capital. We've seen them do it as a more cost-effective, lower-cost kind of refinancing tool. Uh, we've seen new development really start to gravitate to us because they see that ground leases in a development scenario is by far the lowest cost, safest capital they can get. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say our business is driven by any one dynamic. Um, certainly, there will be some distress out there, but I think everybody has realized probably less than they thought. Um, but again, as you know, we're in a 100-year business. We're going to go through many, many different cycles. We've built the business to be resilient and attractive through each scenario that we can come up with, high rates, low rates, you know, distress, you know, sunny days. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about hey, we have to be right about what's going to happen in the next two years. That's not our business. Our business is finding the very best land and the very best markets in the very best country and letting the commercial real estate entrepreneurs who own buildings do what they do, which is make them more valuable. Excellent. So you mentioned long-term. So higher interest rates not really impacting you. Is that something that you think about as all at all when you've got that you know 99-year lease? Yeah, we think about you know, rates and inflation sort of being quite correlated. So mm -hmm. in our ground leases, we typically have some inflation rate protection through what we call CPI lookbacks. It doesn't protect us entirely, but it does give us a nice cushion. We are always competing with the broader finance markets. So as rates go up, that cost competitors, that competitors costs go up. So our pricing will change. But most interestingly, if you think about the buildings on top of our land, when inflation starts to run, those buildings get more valuable. They get more expensive to uh, you know, build, more expensive to compete with. And you know, if you look back over long time periods, uh, inflation uh, and real estate go together very nicely. 
So we think we've created a very powerful combination of long-term predictable cash flows that grow contractually and compound and have some CPI protection. And this enormous pool of real estate sitting on top of the land that we will ultimately own that is very positively correlated with inflation. So kind of doesn't matter what scenario you give me. I will tell you I'm excited about this business and its prospects. We've seen high rates. We've seen low rates. We've seen reflation fears. We've seen deflation fears. Hasn't really impacted our business. Okay. I've got to test you. So one other scenario, climate change. Is that something that you're concerned about when you're talking about 99, 100 years? Certainly we're looking at sea level rise in places like Miami. Yeah. No, it, it's very much on our minds. We, we, we are um, working closely with uh, groups that are doing some of the best work in that area. And you know, candidly, we've redlined some areas that uh, we're just not comfortable over 100 years that that land will be continue to be in a position where it represents this nexus of talent, culture, economic activity. Uh, you know, Miami Beach, you can build a bathtub around it, but if the water comes up through the porous rock, you're going to have an issue. So we've sort of dialed back there waiting to see what the potential solutions might be for that kind of ecological slash rock formation. Uh, whereas in other places, it's not about uh, water. It's about, you know, drought. It's about, right. uh, you know, windstorm, firestorm risks, earthquake risks. So we do have to wear a long, long time horizon hat. Ultimately, all I can tell you is we have to be diversified. We're not we're not pretending we have a crystal ball to be right about everything, but we look at history as a great guide. And if we're in the top 30 cities with the best owners and operators in the best locations, you know, there might be a few blips, but more likely than not, there's going to be some great home runs. Fantastic. Well, you've had massive growth in four years since Safe Holds IPO. Is that the pace that you're going to try to continue to keep, or are you going to slow down as the company matures? I mean, you've mentioned a large addressable market. So, what are you thinking right now? Yeah, no, you know, our view is uh, we should be speeding up, not slowing down. The more people who understand, I mean, it took us literally two years of educating before people would really even talk to us. What is a modern ground lease? Why is it better for me? How does it unlock value? Uh, once we had educated, it was, well, now I believe you, but I don't want to go first. So every market we had to find a you know somebody who would do a ground modern ground lease, and then all their peers would go, oh, it looks like it works. So we've gotten through a lot of that. Um, we think the the brokerage community has gotten very comfortable. The lending community has gotten very comfortable. We're starting to see uh, leasehold positions uh, behind, you know, sitting on top of our land trade at very attractive cap rates. So the story gets better and better. We're getting better at the business, to be honest. We've got in-house teams that are now by far the most experienced in the business. Uh, they've seen every flavor, every variation. They're very good at very quickly saying to a customer, you know, this is a good ground lease and these are the things you don't want to do. And we're not hoarding information. We're sharing it with our customers saying, this is, this is what's worked everywhere else. This is why we suggest it's right for you as well. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, just to continue what we're doing, get better at what we're doing. You know, we've talked about doubling over the next three years in size. Uh, there isn't anybody in our firm, you know, who isn't uh, confident that we should try to beat that goal. Someday we'll slow down, but it's 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 nothing we see in the near term. Running full speed. I love it. All right. Last, uh, slightly foolish question. If you could obtain the ground lease for any property, what would it be? I'm tempted to say Apple's Infinity Loop headquarters because I just mm. think that would be cool. But as you said, looking out my window, I'm going to say Madison Square Garden because I figure if, uh, if we put a 99-year ground lease under that, the Knicks might actually win a title during that time period. So um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, these urban locations that are iconic, you know, over time, you will see us continue to try to, you know, approach those owners and say, we have a better solution for you. So someday, someday, Madison Square Garden, that'll be the one. Great answer. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jay. Thank you. Thanks, Dieter.